Today on Ham Radio Q&A, you've been waiting for it, the field test of the Redivis RT97 portable repeater, so please keep watching for more. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio Q&A. I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community, so if this is your first time watching, please consider hitting that subscribe button. Well, earlier in the summer, I took a look at the Redivis RT97 portable repeater. Thank you to Redivis for uh, providing me a review copy of this uh, for these videos. But as a recap, uh, the RT97 portable re repeater is available as either a VHF or UHF unit and can be ordered with a, either a 5 megahertz or 10 megahertz offset split. Uh, this is an FM analog repeater, has 16 memory channels, uh, wide or narrow band operation, CTCSS and DCS tone squelch, and it operates between 12 and 24 volts. It is a full duplex repeater, and, but due to its uh, compact size, you know, you can only get either a 5 or a 10 megahertz split. And Redivis will program the frequencies into the unit for you so they can tune that duplexer. Please watch my first video on the RT97 for more information on the specs and the operation and some of the pros and cons of this, uh, of this repeater. For this video, you know, I'm going to set it up uh, and do some field testing on it, see what kind of distance we can get using just a handheld radio. To test the repeater, I set up a parrot station using a laptop computer running an application called Echo Station, and then also um, connecting it a, a small UHF handheld radio, and then the BTEC APRS cable. Uh, the Echo Station is a simple Windows application that can function as a repeater controller, announcement machine, or a simplex repeater. And links for all of these items are in the video description below if you want to check out any of them. Uh, but I'll be using it as a simplex repeater so I can hear the quality of my own uh, transmissions as I travel around the area. Now normally Echo Station will control the radios using the serial port, but to simplify things I just put the radio on a uh, Vox control. You know it's not the best solution uh, as there's some clipping of the transmissions, you know, but it's good enough uh, for this test. So uh, let's go outside and give the Redivis RT97 a workout. I'm out here at uh, Reservoir Park. It's one of the highest points in the city of Wausau, and this park gets its name from the water tank that's behind me here. It's also a great place for a repeater site, and there's a couple repeaters up here already, one for the police department and another for public works. So I thought this would be a great location to test the uh, Redivis RT97 portable repeater. I got the repeater in the car, and it's connected to the, uh, my dual-band mobile whip antenna on the on the back end of the car here. This is the Comet SBB7, a high gain and uh, whip on uh, UHF, so it should work great for the tests. So I'm gonna get on the bike and um, tool around town and let's see what kind of range we can expect. We're at uh, River Life Park. This is about one mile away from the repeater site. KB9 VBR. KB9 VBR testing. One, two, three, four, five. KB9 VBR testing. One, two, three, four, five. Audio quality sounds good, full scale. Um, about a mile away. Okay, second stop. This is about uh, two and a half miles from the repeater site. Uh, we're at the downtown municipal airport. A bit further away, we got some trees and houses around here. We'll see what we can get. KB9 VBR, KB9 VBR testing. One, two, three, four, five. Here. Signal is definitely noisier here, um, not as strong as it was at the first spot. Uh, let's go to mile four and see what that sounds like. All right, we're at the uh, four mile point, so let's uh, do another test and uh, see how the repeater sounds. KB9 VBR testing. KB9 VBR testing. One, two, three, four, five. We're at the Schofield Dam. KB9 VBR testing. One, two, three, four, five. We're at the Schofield Dam. Still 
little bit of noisy um, still you know fully readable you can understand everything but definitely not a full quieting signal uh, let's bike out to six miles and see what it sounds like from there All right, uh, we're at the um, six mile point at the hospital over in Weston. And let's give the repeater another test. KB9 VBR testing. KB9 VBR testing. One, two, three, four, five, Weston St. Clair Hospital. Testing, KB9 VBR testing. One, two, three, four, five, Weston St. Clair Hospital. Okay, that was still a pretty good transmission uh, at uh, six miles out. Um, still a little bit noisy. I think that's with the antenna that I'm using over at the um, at the repeater site. It's probably 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 the reason why. Uh, but otherwise, uh, co good copy at six miles out. So let's try seven miles. That will be at the southernmost edge of town. We are seven miles away uh, from the repeater site, as far south as I'm gonna go today. And uh, let's give her another test. KB9 VBR. KB9 VBR testing. One, two, three, four, five. Cedar Creek and Cronenwetter. Okay, two test transmissions there. The first one I had a lot of dropouts. The second one I had a lot of hash noise. Um, if I reorient myself a little bit, I might be able to get a stronger signal. But I think we're pretty much at the at the limit here, uh, about seven miles. Could probably squeeze out eight if it's a if it's a good clear spot. But um, I'm going to call it quits. I think it's a very successful test. Um, each time we had cl uh, readable copy, mostly clear. As we got towards the end, you could hear more of that hash noise, but um, also remember too that um, you know the, the, the parrot's going to pick up some noise and retransmit it back so it's going to double the amount of noise I would get if it was an actual person-to-person um, uh, -person repeater contact. So kind of keep that in mind. But um, otherwise I think the test went uh, very well and now I gotta, I gotta bike back home. I know a little bit from my impressions on the RT97 portable repeater. You know, I was really surprised by the, uh, the distance I was able to get with the um, using just a handheld radio and, and the mobile whip antenna on the car. Um, you know, things, you know, uh, the first couple of transmissions at the one mile and the two mile, you know, they sound reasonably good. As I got out at um, four and six miles, I could definitely tell that there's more hash and noise in the signal. And finally, you know, the seven mile, that was really kind of stretching the rubber band um, to its limits. And one thing to really consider though, you know, if you're, um, you know, testing a repeater or um, simplex communications is it's really dependent upon uh, three things, you know, your, um, antenna height and gain, uh, repeater output power, and then of course your uh, local terrain. And um, I was able to park, I was able to park my car, you know, in a, in a fairly high spot. So we had really good coverage around the city. And you know, the city's kind of in a bowl shape because we're in a river valley. So I, I, I think that, you know, that kind of helped out uh, with the initial uh, tests as I was closer in and, and really in, in low spots. But as I, as I got a little bit further out, uh, it had a little bit more of um, hills and other obstructions that started to kind of affect the the, the quality of my signal, signal. And you could kind of tell that as um, you listen to um, the transmissions come back to you uh, from the from the Echo Station Parrot. Uh, but all in all, you know, I was really impressed um, by its range. Seven miles isn't bad. Uh, it kind of covers the whole city, especially, especially for a 10 watt repeater. If I was put up a little bit higher and you know put the antenna up a little bit higher use a little bit higher gain antenna and not the the whip on the car i think we probably could have got a little bit um better distance of course if i was if i was using the mobile radio to test things out you know then the you know then the distance would be greater too but you know i think with a 10 watt repeater the best you know the most accurate real world test is going to be using a 5 watt handheld radio if you 
uh, you could, you're going to be kind of lopsided using a, using a mobile radio to test a 10 watt repeater. Uh, but all in all, you know, like I said, I was impressed and um, I think, you know, this is a great choice for uh, communication groups, emergency communication teams that are looking for a portable repeater, an event repeater, you know, something you can stick up fast and just hand out um, radios or have people with those frequencies, that frequency program, programmed in and then you've got your own your own repeater for the event um, or, or, or the other or disaster situation or whatever else you, want, you wanted to use it for. So uh, with that in mind, I think it's a, it's a great tool for that purpose. Uh, do you have any questions or comments on the uh, Redivus RT97 repeater? I'd love to hear them. You can, please, you can leave them in uh, the video uh, comments below. I'll filter through those, um, answer them the best I can, and also maybe I'll pick a few for my next Your Questions Answered video. For more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. Uh, if you like this video, you can do a few things for me. Uh, number one, give me that big thumbs up. I really appreciate that. And also, uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button uh, that's alongside here. Uh, pressing subscribe is your way to be notified when future videos are released. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.